Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and today we're talking about BACnet Secure Connect, this huge shift in one of the most important protocols that we use to communicate within buildings. I'm joined today by Alina Matthewhina. She is a product manager for cybersecurity at Siemens Smart Infrastructure. Alina, thank you so much for joining us. Hi John, happy to be here. It's always an absolute pleasure. Uh, in the past couple of episodes, we've talked a lot about how building protocols, you know, they facilitate such an important part of what buildings do today, spreading and sharing information within these systems, with between different systems. They, they basically enable all of this great functionality that we're able to do within buildings today, but they come with some challenges. Uh, specifically in this connected world, they have some challenges around being secure uh, and protecting the, you know, the continuity of function and, and the information. And we touched very quickly on BACnet Secure Connect, which is a huge uh, shift in our industry uh, towards making changes specifically around this area. Let's start at the very, very beginning. Could you could you give us a, an introduction of what is BACnet Secure Connect? Okay, yes, yeah, sure, John. Uh, so with increasing number of these um, uh, requirements on IT, on T uh, convergence, and also to address the current uh, laws and regulations uh, on cybersecurity, BACnet committee, they developed uh, BACnet Secure Connect. So uh, BACnet Secure Connect is actually a new data link uh, in uh, uh, BACnet stack. So the applications layer staying untouched, which means that uh, all the messages, uh, bugnet messages, they stay in the same, only the wrapper around these messages uh, are changing. Uh, so this provides uh, a compatibility with uh, already existing installations. Uh, so for those uh, who are using, uh, for example, existing infrastructure uh, and they want to move to Bugnet Secure World, they need uh, to use a router. It's actually the same way uh, if you want to move from BACnet MSCP to BACnet IP. You just need a router to do this. Right. I, you touched on a couple of really important points there because obviously um, maybe before we dive into those, mm -hmm. can I assume that BACnet Secure Connect, it's written in the name, but it, you know, by bringing these additional features, they, it, this translates into a more secure uh, connection, more secure sharing of information. Exactly. So uh, one of the most important uh, features in Wagner Secure Connect uh, is ab adapting uh, IT best practices. So IT world, uh, they're using TLS, transport layer security, uh, already, uh, I would say, uh, 10 years. Like, so, uh, okay, we have uh, a lot of, uh, maybe everyone knows HTTPS, uh, secure HTTP, uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, TLS used uh, to secure this million of HTTP transactions right. every day. Yeah, and uh, uh, right now, Bacnet Secure Connect, uh, they adapted this standard uh, in uh, building protocols. Now uh, you see that uh, our building protocols, they become as secure as the IT networks. Perfect. So we're actually learning from the best practice, which obviously IT mm -hmm. know IT security better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. We're learning from them. We're taking their 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 cutting edge technology and we're applying mm -hmm. it to our communication mm -hmm. structures. Yeah. And Amazing. by the way, I <laughs> just want to mention that uh, currently uh, best practice to use TLS uh, 1.2, but mm -hmm. Wagner Secure Connect, uh, they are uh, requesting to use uh, TLS 1.3, which is the uh, much more secure and uh, also much faster. So right. now you see that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the protection of building networks become like uh, uh, protected as, uh, for example, you're accessing your e-banking account. Okay, okay. So we're not just uh, doing what's best today, we're getting ready yeah. for what's best tomorrow. Exactly, exactly. Beautiful. And, and now let's go back to some of the things that you mentioned at the start because because, okay, we have this new feature set. We have mm -hmm. uh, a new um, security structure and, and skills that we're bringing to that, a new approach. But you mentioned a few different things. Firstly, uh, you mentioned that at a communication level, the language stays the same. Yes, exactly. So, BACnet, uh, this object oriented uh, client server uh, language, is the same. So, building operators, uh, they don't need to learn any other language. and. Uh, they, uh, yeah, uh, will understand uh, the communication between devices pretty easily. 
Cool. So the people who have been using BACnet for 20 years, um, mm -hmm. you know, the actual packets of information that are sent around, this doesn't change. So they still, exactly. it will still look the same. It will still feel the same. They will still have be able to derive the same understanding mm -hmm. and knowledge when they're, when they're, you know, trying to diagnose faults or anything like that or understand what's happening. It's just this wrapper that you talked about yes. is, is, is adds some security hardness to this. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, I would say the migration of installed bases, uh, it would be very easily with Bucknet Secure Connect. And that was the second point that you mentioned that, uh, you know, the, the the installations that use Bucknet today mm -hmm. can use Bucknet Secure Connect tomorrow. It's not like we have to tear everything out and start again. Exactly. Yes. Which is huge. Now, and how would how does that work? So so with within a, an installation that's using BACnet, we obviously have BACnet devices. Some will be will be 20 years on, old. Some will be 10 years old. Some will be new. How uh, how does that uh, look on site? How do we start to bring this kind of level of security to an existing uh, an existing installation? So you just need a router to develop a router which will. Uh, uh, transform BACnet IP, for example, traffic to BACnet uh, Secure Connect uh, or from uh, BACnet MSCP to BACnet Secure Connect. Perfect. And then th those different packets of information can be passed from one to the other as smoothly as they would be exactly. normally. But yeah. once you're on the BACnet Secure Connect side, it comes yeah. with all of these additional security features that uh, the TLS and, and some of the things that you mentioned from an, an IT perspective have been brought into that uh, into this thing. Yeah, because uh, initially it would be uh, very difficult to bring all the devices, even like legacy devices, to BACnet Secure Connect world. So at first, uh, uh, I would say, like my opinion, to concentrate uh, more on future devices. For sure. Mm -hmm. Now, the, all this sounds amazing. Obviously, any kind of focus from the industry to kind of have a, have a natural security mm -hmm. capability within the protocol itself solves a lot of problems. Uh, it makes things easy or at the very least more structured when it comes to trying to secure uh, communications within a building. Are we there today or is this something for tomorrow? Um, I think, uh, yeah, like this is a very good uh, uh, step forward for secure uh, systems, uh, building systems, but uh, we still need to consider a lot of elements here. Uh, so this TLS, for example, yes, uh, we know that uh, it provides secure end-to-end -end communication, but um, for example, there is uh, one more feature, uh, very interesting one. So devices, they cannot uh, uh, start uh, their communication in building networks anymore without properly signed certificates. And uh, uh, these certificates, they are very common in IT world, but uh, not so common in building automation world. Uh, for example, uh, these certificates, they have a uh, um, restriction of lifetime. Uh, so uh, there is a lot of questions that need to be answered because uh, Buckner Secure Connect standards, they don't provide uh, a standard way. Uh, for example, what uh, certificate authority you need to use mm -hmm. or uh, like a lot of manufacturers, I would say they can develop different approaches, for okay. example, to use self-signed certificate or to use public uh, uh, certificate authority or um, yeah, just uh, think about, okay, uh, large projects uh, large, uh, like uh, airports, they already have this IT infrastructure in place, um, so they can easily manage these certificates. But what about kindergartens or small schools? They uh, uh, don't have this know-how. understand. Yeah, okay. So so is it safe to say or is it is it accurate to say that the, the standard itself, BACnet Secure Connect, has been defined? Exactly. This has been documented and, and we're now in the phase of working out as an industry, you know, manufacturers, uh, you know, installers, uh, people that are, are, are integrating and deploying these. Mm -hmm. We're working out exactly how to take that, that, that definition and put it into practice. Exactly. We really need to come up uh, our minds regarding this because there are so many aspects to consider and uh, uh, my prediction will be that uh, actually our uh, engineering and commissioning workflow will change with the certificate management. Yeah. 
definitely. Now I'm going to, to to close this episode because I think we've covered a lot already. I'm going to put you on the spot, uh, and <laughs> and please don't uh, don't don't feel that we're going to hold you to this. But if you had to guess, if you had to estimate, uh, today we have the the standard defined. How long do you think before uh, we can go to a site uh, and see a BACnet secure connect uh, system up and running in the real world? Oh, that's a <laughs> very interesting question, John, you know. <laughs> uh, I think it will take a few years. Okay, so we're talking years, not months. Let, yes. let's, okay. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> no, no maybe that's the, the question I was really asking, because I think that's interesting as well. You know, it's a huge uh -huh. step forward. Uh, it's such an important understanding for us as an industry to know that this is coming, and it will, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, change not just what we're able to to deploy from a security mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, you talked a little bit about not just you know, the protection of the, the communication of the information, but also the authentication of different devices. Okay. Those are two very huge topics mm -hmm. um, that, that uh, both kind of create this end-to-end -end security, uh, but also to understand for everyone that yes, it's deploy or it's defined, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the BACnet Society has, has documented this but it will take us a little bit of time, years, not months, uh, before we sort of see these systems in, you know, in buildings, in installations, delivering this, you know, the full suite of benefits uh, yeah. tomorrow. So, yeah, there are so many reasons to get excited about this, like, more secure solution, uh, but also to be patient, that's for sure. And I think that's a good thing. You know, when it comes to security, we shouldn't rush, right? Because uh, if you rush, this is where <laughs> yes. we, you know, mistakes can be made. So that's perfect. That's cool. Alina, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, John. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it as well. Uh, and thank you also to everyone out there listening. Please feel free to comment, like, share this episode, subscribe to us here on your favorite podcast channel. Go and find some of the videos on YouTube. Uh, and as always, get in touch with us and let us know if there's anything else that you're interested in. We have plenty more to talk about around BACnet Secure Connect. So keep uh, your eyes open to see some more discussions between Alina and myself. And we'll see you again soon. See you.